Good morning. Uh, my name is Greg Rothman. I represent the 87th uh, Representative District in Cumberland County. I'm here today to talk about uh, my bill that I've uh, introduced yesterday to lower the corporate net income tax from 9.99%. It's the second highest in the United States, down to 5.99% uh, almost immediately. Uh, we, uh, as everyone knows in, in the capital, have been paying attention. We have a, a fiscal crisis. We don't bring in as much money and revenue as we spend. Um, I want to talk about today how we create more revenue. And historically, when it's been done, it was done in, in the 60s with President Kennedy and done in the, uh, the early part of the 2000s in the, the George W. Bush administration. Government saw revenues grow. But the biggest moment when tax cut rates raised revenue was in the summer of 1981, 36 years ago, when a congressman from Buffalo, Jack Kemp, and a senator from Delaware, William Roth, introduced what became known as the Kemp Roth tax cuts. It lowered marginal rates by 25%, and its net effect was 20 million new jobs, raising federal revenues, as you can see on this chart, from just under 500 million to almost a trillion dollars over the course of the eight years of the Reagan administration. But it also changed our attitude as, uh, as a country and as a government that we could cut tax rates and create more revenue. Uh, early in my, uh, when I first got here, I met with the, the good people from the American Cancer Association and the American Lung Association. And they told me that it had been, they had been determined without any doubt that by raising the taxes on cigarettes, they had shown that people were smoking less. So why would we want to raise taxes on businesses that create jobs and create revenue for the state? Let's cut the tax rates. It generates more, more revenue. So I'm joined with uh, several of my colleagues and also uh, organizations to support us. I'd like to introduce uh, first Senator Ryan Amont to talk about the Senate. Good morning, and it's a real privilege for me to be here with a number of my former colleagues over in the House, and uh, it's, a, it's a real honor to be here with uh, Jimmy Kemp. Um, I think many of us are proud to call ourselves Kemp Republicans, and with my generation, sometimes that comes with an explanation, requires an explanation, and I'm always proud to give the explanation as to why I'm a Jack Kemp Republican. The Independent Fiscal Office last fall came out with, as they often do, a, a long-term uh, fiscal review of Pennsylvania's economic situation. And I think this report was quite, um, was, was quite stark in terms of the picture it painted over the next five years of the fiscal situation that our Commonwealth faces. We have an aging population, and as a result of that, we see uh, real pressure on the expenditure side of our leisure related to human services and, and serving those uh, who are retired, those that are aging, and in greater and greater need of, of public services, of state services. And on the revenue side of the equation, we've seen revenues flatten out and not keep pace with mandated costs as it relates to human services and public sector pension obligations. And so the budget deficit that we face today is projected to grow. We have an unemployment rate that lags behind the national average. We have a workforce participation rate that lags well behind the national average. And so the answer, the long-term answer, cannot continue to be to ask Pennsylvania families and to ask Pennsylvania businesses to pay more in taxes. The answer, as Representative Rothman has talked about, as Jack, Jack Kemp talked about, for many, many years is to generate revenue through economic growth, through economic opportunity, to ensure that young people stay in Pennsylvania to, to, not, only, to uh, not only attend our institutions of higher education, but remain here in Pennsylvania, to be employed here, to be employers here, be entrepreneurs here, and to create economic opportunity and upward mobility. So my hope is, is that we will take on legislation that will reduce the corporate net income tax put in place legislation that will reform the regulatory environment and so that we can create an opportunity society in Pennsylvania. So I applaud Representative Rothman and my colleagues uh, who are working so very hard on this issue and, and thank you for giving the opportunity to say just a few words. Thank you, sir. I'd also like to introduce, um, to say a few words, one of the, uh, the leader of our taxpayer caucus in the House, a member of the Appropriations Committee and uh, a great friend and a, and a great leader in, in uh, 
keeping uh, watch on how government spends taxpayer dollars. Seth Grove from York County. Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, Jimmy, thanks for joining us today in the beautiful uh, state capital of Pennsylvania. Um, today we're talking about, about revenues. We're not talking about increasing taxes to create revenues. We're talking about growing our economy and growing jobs. Uh, I think um, Greg mentioned that uh, we have the second highest um, corporate net income tax rate. Uh, the, the highest would be Iowa at 12.99%, but they have a they have a uh, progressive tax system, so effectively we have the highest corporate net income tax in the entire country. When businesses come and they want to locate here, and I had conversations with their governor's action team, they have to spend time to convince businesses and corporations that are scared of the 9.99% uh, corporate net income tax to actually come to Pennsylvania or stay in Pennsylvania versus going to any other state in the Commonwealth with a lower uh, business tax. Uh, by, by some smart pro-growth policies, uh, like what Representative uh, Rothman has proposed, we can grow our economy, grow for revenues, and actually get out of a structural deficit. Once you start chasing revenues in state government, you will always chase revenues. It will never be enough. Uh, holding down spending and doing proactive tax policy changes uh, like other states are doing, and we're falling behind those other states to compete for businesses and jobs, uh, we, will, we will start closing those deficits and, and increasing our economy. And the most powerful thing we can do is give someone a job. It's the most uh, important thing we can do. And it shouldn't be, you know, I, I don't think anybody here is going to stand up and say, we've created X number of jobs because that role is solely for the private sector. When that private sector organizations come back and say, we've created thousands of jobs because of the tax policies and the pro-business climate we've created in Pennsylvania, that's success for Harrisburg, that's success for Pennsylvania, and that's success for residents of Pennsylvania. Greg, thank you for your leadership. Uh, Jimmy, thank you for your leadership and your dad's leadership and bringing some fiscal uh, conservative policies to, to government. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Uh, I, I brought along a napkin. Uh, this was a replica of the Art Laffer curve. and. Uh, Dr. Laffer, who was a, a, um, uh, a great influence over Jack Kemp, uh, wrote this down in a meeting, I think it was with Donald Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney um, when they were young White House staffers in the 70s. But he said there are two tax rates that produce no revenue for the government, zero and 100%, because zero obviously doesn't create any tax, it doesn't create any revenue. And in 100%, there's no incentive to work. And so um, it was Congressman Kemp who convinced his former boss, Ronald Reagan, uh, to make this part of his platform in 1980. And um, we saw what happened with the Reagan tax cuts. Uh, it is my honor to introduce um, Jimmy Kemp. Uh, Jimmy was a high school junior or senior during the 1988 campaign. Junior or senior? Junior. Junior. And uh, Jack would go home on Friday nights for your football games. Yep. Uh, he kept the family tradition going, his, his uh, older brother Jeff uh, played at Dartmouth and uh, also for the Seahawks and, and our Philadelphia Eagles. We could probably use them now. Um, Jimmy went to play at Winston-Salem and then played it for several teams in the Canadian Football League. Uh, he has four, he and his wife have uh, four sons and uh, he runs the Kemp Foundation and is in uh, suburban DC and I appreciate him being here today to talk about the legacy of the Kemp Roth tax cuts. Jimmy? Thanks Greg, appreciate it. Well, it's, uh, it's great to be here in Harrisburg um, talking about what really creates economic growth. And as Seth just mentioned, uh, it's not government. Um, the, the hope of America, the American idea, uh, is to unleash people um, to pursue that which they believe makes their lives better, uh, which will make their children's lives better. Um, and <clears throat> We need more Greg Rothmans and senators and members uh, like these standing on this uh, platform talking about a proper understanding of how economic growth happens. There's a misconception that government officials can generate economic growth. Um, it's not the president, it's not Congress, it is the American people. It's the citizens of any country who are its greatest strength. Um, and so in order to unleash that human capital, the critical component um, in economic policy is to get tax rates right. It's not to consistently and ever 
more into the future to cut tax rates down to zero, because as Greg just mentioned, then you get no revenue. But there is a sweet spot, um, and we haven't reached it yet, uh, but there's no doubt that a simpler, uh, fairer, lower tax rate is the best path to give businesses uh, a, uh, an environment of predictability so that they can make the best de determinations for the future um, on how to run their business, to uh, create more jobs, to hire more people, to make more money. It's okay to make money. Um, and I think that uh, reminding people of that uh, reality is, is an important role because as we've seen in DC, and I know here in Harrisburg and state capitals around the country, uh, there's that misconception that, uh, that people think government with the tweaking this policy and that, uh, that law will stimulate economic growth when what, what really does it and what was at the heart of the Kemp Roth tax cut uh, of 1981, known as the Economic Recovery Act, um, was a belief that human beings are the source, the dynamic source of economic growth, opportunity, and hope uh, for the future. Um, and we live in a really exciting time. Something that my dad, uh, I think, has left for all of us is to remember the importance of optimism. And that was the basis of the Kemp Roth tax cut, uh, that we have a hopeful future. Um, yes, because of a great country that we have and a government that has checks and balances that will ensure um, that there's limited government. Uh, but getting economic policy right, um, making sure tax rates are, uh, are in line with, with reality to uh, allow people to expand their businesses, uh, but also an important part of it that's being talked about today uh, with regard to trade and the global economy that we have is getting uh, monetary policy right. And that's the heart of supply side economics. Um, and it's important uh, from my perspective for the legacy of my dad that there are people talking about how we get tax rates right and then on the, uh, at the federal level talking about getting our monetary policy right. Um, so those are things that I spend my time doing. Uh, and I think the, the, the summation of my father's legacy um, is that he wanted to advance the American idea, which is the human idea best described in the Declaration of Independence, uh, that people have the right to uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, and these policies are an important part uh, of those rights. So I appreciate Greg's uh, effort to have that inspiration behind his legislation. Um, and it's important to have the stories too, to have the business leaders, uh, especially small, small business leaders, who can, uh, can tell the stories of what it's like uh, to do business in, in where they're living. Um, and certainly here in Pennsylvania, it's true that there's a significant burden on those uh, business owners, and uh, so it's great that this legislation is being introduced. Look forward to being helpful, uh, and appreciate Greg having me here and all these uh, legislators and supporters. So thanks for having me to Har here to Harrisburg, and look forward to talking to all these folks later. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Stick here for a second. Um, the, the last subsequent conversation I had with Jimmy's dad, Jack, was when he came to Harrisburg in 2006, and uh, we had a, about a half an hour in between the the event we were doing and, and lunch and we were talking and he said um, he said it's a mistake to talk about cutting taxes right he said because there are people on both sides there are conservatives who want a strong national defense and need money for a strong national defense yep. and there are people on the liberal side who want more social programs and there are people in the middle who want their roads and the police and the courts and the things that government does so when you cut about cutting taxes, people think, oh, that means there's going to be less money for government. He said, we need to be talking about cutting tax rates. Yep. So my staff has heard it over and over again. <laughs> we're not cutting taxes, we're cutting tax rates. And, and that's the difference. Uh, those of us who I spent most of my time in the private sector and business, I don't mind paying taxes. Uh, I sometimes mind the way government spent it. But incentivize people to make those decisions to invest in Pennsylvania. We have the best state in the country. We have the best labor force, we have the best people. Geographically, we have the best location. We have uh, natural resources like gas and coal 
And, and most of all, as, uh, as you've, you've heard over and over again, we have the people. And, and this is the state of innovation. I mean, this is where all the great industrial uh, industries started in Pennsylvania and, and continue to start. I was in Pittsburgh and was with the Ober people. Innovation is, is the key to the growth. And so we need to unleash that. And by lowering the corporate net income tax, we'll do that. But happy to take any questions. And thank you, Jimmy. Thank you all for, for being here. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Greg.